Hey everyone, welcome back. Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. I've got a project that I want to do here in the near future, a build project, a DIY floor lamp or desk lamp. I'm not really quite sure exactly what welding process I want to use when I make this, this particular lamp. So in this video, I want to do a little bit of testing. I'm going to try two techniques. One, I'm going to use flux core wire in just a simple flux core welding machine to weld this uh, thin galvanized um, rectangular tubing. And then the second method is I want to clean off the galvanization and see if I can uh, TIG weld it. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack about TIG welding on galvanized steel, but I'll show you what I'm going to do to set it up and, and I'm going to do some tests on some pieces of scrap. And let me take you over to the little table I got set up over here and show you what I'm trying to do. These are about 1.5 millimeters in thickness, some rectangular steel galvanized. It has a very thin galvanized coating, but it is galvanized and I think it's dipped. So that means that there's galvanization inside as well. Every time I do a video welding galvanized, I get a bunch of comments about how unsafe it is. But I'll show you what I'm going to do to try to prevent myself from getting that sickness. There's several things you can do that are pretty simple. And then I'm going to take a, one of these benchmark abrasives, my favorite cutoff wheels from these guys by uh, benchmark abrasives. I'll put links for these things in the description if you're curious about them. I want to look at some more information. But they're affordable and they work for me and that's what I use. So I'm just going to use that to draw a radius along here on both sides. I'm going to cut right down the edge and then cut out this radius and, and cut this off flush here. Do the same thing on the other side. So I've got this section here and I'll bend it down, weld it. And I'm going to try with flux core and then I'm going to try to do this same thing with uh, TIG weld and then cut it off and weld that seam. So I have a nice round radius on the edge or the side of this what's going to end up being a stand for, for a, uh, a floor lamp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my little angle grinder, air angle grinder with one of these. This is also a benchmark abrasive surface conditioning disc. And I'm going to take all the galvanize off the outside of this tube and then draw my lines on there. And then uh, cut it out so that I don't have any galvanize left on the exterior of this thin gauge square tubing. So that when I TIG weld that hopefully I can do it successfully. We'll see. So trying to blow those smoke fumes away, I'm going to use a small fan in an open area and uh, hopefully not blow my welding gas away. But that's the experiment and that's what I'm going to be trying out in this video. So let me get this ground down, cut up and ready to go and then we'll give it a shot. And for the flux core machine, I'm just going to use this little Yes Welder Flux 135. And this is a 110 or 120 volt only machine. 
turn that on. I think I'm going to start with 65 amps. I'll probably do a couple little test pieces from those pieces I cut off. Try that first, 60 amps. We'll see how it works. And if that seems to be all right, then that's what I'm going to use. I'll adjust it if necessary. All right, so I was able to get that done with the little uh, Yes Welder Flux 135 on 110 volts. I had it set at uh, 030 wire and 60 amps, and that seemed to do real well. Now I'm going to take my four and a half inch angle grinder, and I'm going to use these jumbo flap discs. These things are, I love them. They're awesome. Again, I'll put the link in the description, but I'm going to take this, and I may have to follow up with the 120 grit after I do the initial removal of material and I'm gonna try to get cut this off with the cut wheel and then take that jumbo flap disc and smooth this out see what kind of a finish I can get on that this is with the 80 grit benchmark abrasive flap disc so keep that in mind and I just did a quick rough job on it and it's welded with the affordable Yes Welder Flux 135, little 110 welder. Perfect for this type of job, I think. I think it came out really nice. And if I was to sand that with 120 just to smooth it up and then put a coat of paint on it. All right, let's get, I'll get everything set up and uh, we'll do the same thing with this next one. And I'll see what I can do with the uh, TIG welder. Here's my setup for the TIG. I'm going to be using the Yes Welder CT2050 on a DC TIG 60 amps. SR70S6 I believe is what I'm using on the filler wire. And then you can see over here on the left side of the screen, I've got a small fan set up. And that's just going to be on low, blowing basically at my welding helmet, just to blow any fumes away that are trying to get underneath my welding hood. And uh, try not to blow away the shielding gas from the TIG torch. On the fit up on this, I've got a couple of pretty good sized gaps. So those are going to be somewhat of a challenge. I went ahead and tack welded this and ground off the tacks with the, uh, those are uh, flux core tacks just because it was easier to press down and use one hand with the, with the MIG gun and the other hand to hold it in place while I get a couple tacks on it. But that looks to be like the best fit that I have for the way I cut this out. Part of the uh, reason I'm doing this practice also is I've never cut anything out within this fashion before, so I wanted to practice a couple of cuts. So it looks like I need to follow the line a little bit closer on that curve with the uh, benchmark cutting wheel. Anyway, I think if I run from this corner and run this direction, as I get a puddle, just keep feeding filler wire to it, I think I should be able to fill that gap, but we'll see. This is still going to require some grinding and finishing to get a good, good look on it. So my gut feeling at this point in time, even though I haven't done the TIG part yet, is I'm thinking that the uh, flux core is going to be the easiest and probably the most practical solution for this type of a weld. But we're going to give it a shot anyway because I'm set up for it and I want to try it and we'll see how it goes. I mean, that'll work. Let me clean that up with the flap disc. 
I'll just use again the Benchmark Abrasive Jumbo Flap Disc. I'm going to use the 120 grit because there's not near as much material to remove on this one as before. We'll clean it up and then we'll hold the other one up next to it side by side and we'll have a look. Flux core on the right, TIG on the left. Trying to determine which one was going to be better, TIG or flux core. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Would you use the TIG or the flux core for this particular project? My personal thought is they both work fine. The methods that I used using the fan with the TIG, no problems with the fumes from the uh, galvanized coating as it burns off while you weld it. End result, in my opinion, is identical because I ground them both with the flap disc just to smooth them out and have a kind of a non-welded look. Check the description below if you want to check out anything about each one of the welders, the S Welder Flux 135 or the Yes Welder CT2050 TIG machine. I'll uh, put links and discount codes for those machines, as well as Benchmark Abrasives flap discs, cutoff wheels, and those resurfacing discs for your uh, air tools. Uh, put the ones that I like the best, some Amazon links for those. Click on the screen now if you'd like to see another hobby fabrication in your own garage video type stuff that I like to do. And uh, we'll see you over on that video.